Hey everyone, this is a short interlude episode. We just wanted to recap on Yellowstone, Grand Tetons, Glacier National Park, and on general on the trip so far. We're just under halfway through our trip, would you believe? We'll start with the, the disappointments. Um, they're not things that we didn't like. They're just disappointments, things that didn't meet the expectations we had. Mm. Uh, one of the ones that I found a little bit disappointing was uh, the Grand Prismatic um, in Yellowstone. Unfortunately, just the way nature works, the time of the day that we were there, it was really, really steamy. You couldn't really see much of the colour in the crans, um, in the, the lake itself. So that was a bit of a disappointment. I was really hoping to see the beautiful colours throughout that, but just couldn't see it. Another disappointment, but there's a positive twinge to it, is the cost of the Old Faithful Inn. Coming from Australia, uh, it was one of those once in a life type things. It was extremely expensive. By the time we converted it to Aussie dollars, it was a very expensive experience. A really good experience, but super expensive. So if you're thinking about going to Old Faithful, you know, do look at the cost, but the, the positive is you're in the middle of everything. Mm. Yep. Yeah, so converting that to Australian dollars, currently the Australian dollars are around 67 US cents. So by the time we had two nights accommodation plus one nights of meals in the, uh, in the restaurant and Scott had a breakfast, I didn't go down for breakfast. I think that we worked out it was over a thousand Australian dollars for the two nights. So that's super expensive not something that we would repeat in a hurry, but it was, as Scott said, good to be in the middle of everything because Yellowstone, um, I'm gonna speak in kilometers here, it's about 100 kilometers from North to Northgate to Southgate and almost 100 kilometers from Westgate to Eastgate. So it's a huge park, massive differences in landscape from snow-capped peaks. There's almost a thousand meters difference between the highest peak and the lowest part of Yellowstone. So you're seeing a lot of different landscapes, a lot of different animals. And to be in the park just makes that travel around that large area a lot easier. When you talk about a hundred kilometers, you know, so each way, um, keep in mind, uh, I think the top speed is about 30 mile an hour, which is about... 30 or 45 difference. Mile an hour, yeah. Mm. So you're not going at hundred k's an hour. You're going really slow. There is a lot of traffic that we found and there's always animal jams, which are absolutely fantastic. Mm. But it means sometimes you're sitting still like the bear jam. Mm. That was a really long queue. We got to see those bears, which was fantastic. But for other people, as we were driving out after seeing the bears, after driving past about 20 cars, people were saying to us, what is it? What is it? And then we would say, you know, there's four bears down there and people were super excited about being stuck mm. in an animal jam. They just want to get moving to see them though. And and from where the jam was to the traffic backed up where, that we drove past, there must have been at least 100 cars. Huge. It was backed up and, and more cars were coming. So yep. if you get stuck in one of those jams, you could be there for an hour, two hours. We were lucky that we might have been there for 40 minutes. Yeah, the most. Um, yep. Because I got out of the car and took video and photo as well. Yep. So, you know, just be prepared for those things. One thing we did notice is is that some people, not all, but some people were speeding through the park. So we were trying to keep to that speed limit of 45 miles per hour, per hour or 30 miles per hour in the different areas. And the reason that's there is because of the animals. You have bears that walk out in front of you. You have deer. You have bison. elk, bison even the little squirrels. You know, squirrels, they, they ground, all, ground prairie dogs. <laughs> yeah, they just jump out on the road in front of you. And if you're not doing 45 miles per hour and you're instead doing 70 or 80, you're going to clean them up. They, they, you're going to kill an animal, which is really sad, and it's going to make a mess of your car and could even injure you as well. So if you do go to Yellowstone, please be one of those mindful people who do stick to the speed limit and look out for the animals. And the pedestrians who jumped out to take <laughs> photographs of car, um, animals as well. At the, that's right. At the Animal Jam, people are just milling all across the road. In fact, one of the rangers said that there are more accidents with people at Animal Jams <laughs> than animals. Yeah, that's right. So <laughs> yeah. when, when there's a bear jam, for instance, he was saying that they have more people injured by getting hit by a car in Yellowstone than by a, attacked by a bear, for instance. Yeah. So, yeah... 
be sensible when you're driving. It's a national park. It's not an out um, state highway that you can just do 70 miles per hour on. One unfortunate incident, uh, we're driving through keeping to the speed limit and I did run over one of those little prairie dogs. He just ran out in front of me before I could even respond and I just felt the thud thud under the wheels and went, oh no. Mm. So it, it does happen. We hit a little bird later on that was on the highway. It, little things like that do happen, which is unfortunate. Yeah. So. All right. One of the positives that we found is all the animals. Now we... Mm. I did catch up. We didn't see as many animals as we thought we were going to. I did catch up with one of the animal management rangers mm. and I said to him. In Tetons. In, yeah. in the Tetons. I said to him, mate, we come, we've come from Australia. We just want to know where the, the bears, the moose and the elk are. And he said, well, you know, they're not all just hanging around waiting to, you know, to be photoed and, and photographed and seen by everyone. He said, oh, what I could do is I could text one of the bears, if you like, and just playing along with the joke. He was a funny guy. Uh, I said, mate, can you text Yogi Bear and get him to come out? So it was a nice little bit of fun uh, with that ranger, but he was really helpful in pointing us to where the moose were. Mm -hmm. And he did tell us there were bo there, there are bears you know, throughout the mountains there. And then it was only the next day that we saw four or five bears mm -hmm. in the one day. So they're definitely all out there. You can't text them to get them to come out. <laughs> you just have to be right time, right place. Yeah, and that's right. That's like I said in that Yellowstone episode. Don't go into the park expecting it to be like a zoo safari where the animals are there everywhere to be seen. They're wild animals. The National Park is a natural habitat. It's not a zoo. And these animals operate like wild animals. So they will come out when they're ready, not when you want them to or expect them to. And even one of the tour operators had told us that when we were looking at 11 a.m. that it was too late in the day for bears and she does know what she's talking about but bears are bears they'll do their own thing so it was only maybe an hour after that that we came across a bear jam and then a hundred yards from the roadside was a big mama grizzly bear with four year old with three year old cubs cubs yeah, yeah. yeah. and that was they were beautiful they you know, 100 yards is the safe distance, they say, to keep away from the bears. If you get too close, they will charge you. So we are all stayed on the roadside. Most people were really good. We, uh, As the bears got closer, I backed off to the other side of the road. So it's fairly safe. The rangers do, when they hear that there's a jam and there's animals around, they do come along and try to manage the situation to keep the animals and the people safe. So we, we did see a moose down at the Tetons in the water. One moose. One moose. We saw um, bighorn sheep, mm. pronghorns. We didn't see in Yellowstone, but out of Yellowstone. Yep. Elk. We saw kind of going into Yellowstone, but just thought we'll see a hundred more later on. We didn't. We saw them on the way to Cody. I think it we was. saw el more elk going to Cody. We saw bears. We're not sure. No grizzlies. We saw th the four grizzlies that I just mentioned, and then there was another bear that. We only saw very briefly as we were coming out of the Tetons. We're not sure if it was a black boy, bear or a, a grizzly because we didn't get a good look at it. It had a, a brownish colour, but that makes me think it's a black bear because they can be sometimes black and sometimes brown. Grizzlies can be different colours too. So, you know, yeah. we didn't get a good look at its face to really get an idea of which kind of bear it was. We've seen tree squirrels, ground squirrels, prairie dogs, lots of different birds, Mm. Golden eagles, yeah. we thought we saw a bald eagle, but then later on thought, no, there was too much white on the breast of it, so we don't think it was a bald eagle. Mm. Lots of little wrens and sparrows and woodpecker. Woodpecker. Oh, woodpecker earlier on. Where did I see the woodpecker? At Bannock in Bannock. Montana. Yes, yeah. that was the first wood, live woodpecker that I've ever seen, and it's not a cartoon. We saw a ton of bison. Oh, bison, yes, yeah. gosh. Yeah, so especially in Lamar Valley. They were mm. just everywhere, everywhere, dotted all through that valley around the river. There were lots of baby bison. There was, a, there was a big group of bison hanging around there having their midday rest and they had lots of babies. So I showed you the footage and here's some footage of that now. That was really good. So that's Lamar Valley. You do see bison all through Yellowstone, even out the front of Old Faithful Inn. Yep, they come but, walking right through. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, But if you want to see the babies... 
like we saw. We're, we're here in late May and Lamar Valley is where we saw all of them with their babies. We saw mosquitoes, big mosquitoes. Mm. I reckon the mosquitoes are bigger here in America than the ones Definitely. we have at home. Definitely. Huge. <laughs> we, did, we weren't run off. We weren't, there weren't millions of them, but when there was a big mozzie around, you knew, you could hear it coming in, it was big. Yeah. One of the other great things that we enjoyed was the snow. So oh, yes. coming over, we weren't sure if there was going to be still snow. And what we've heard from locals is that their winter was relatively dry in terms of snow and that they got through December, January, and they're still wondering where the big snow was. And then through spring, they've had a whole bunch of snowstorms and they said that in the end that by May they had exceeded their annual snowfall. So that's pretty exciting that they, they got more snow than usual, but it came very late. And so even when we arrived in Missoula and then again in Yellowstone, as you heard, it was still snowing. We had snow overnight both of those places. And in Yellowstone, when we got to those higher elevations at the Continental Divide, that snow could have been four, four and a half foot deep. Yep. It was huge. Yeah, it was great. I, in fact, one point, uh, I <laughs> I went, I trod in the snow, mm. and it went right up to my knee, well, past my knee, straight away, just straight past my knee. That's how soft it was and how deep it was. And I went, oh wow, this is really, really deep snow. Mm. Um, beautiful soft snow, lovely. Yeah, it was quite funny. There were other people there, and we all had a good laugh at him. <laughs> <laughs> so, also, just the crowds. Like we in May is a good time. It's considered the shoulder season where there's not usually as many people. Yeah. What we didn't realise, because we are Australians and we have Anzac Day back in April, America has their equivalent of Anzac Day, which they call Memorial Day and or the Memorial Weekend, which is usually around the 27th of May. So that was the long weekend for their Memorial Weekend and families, people were coming out in droves. It's just before the summer school vacation holiday from school so families were everywhere and there were so many cars so some of the places it's really hard to get a parking spot so you have to have a lot of patience mm -hmm. with yourself with others and people sometimes they do get a little bit cranky you know people get having long days they're tired they may have driven if they're american or uh, for a long way or like us flown a long way so people just need to be mindful that there's sometimes there's a lot of crowds and parking is difficult. But if you are patient, you will get a spot. We always got a spot. Only once did we not get a spot mm. when we were getting back to Old Faithful to see mm. Old Faithful guys a shoot. And we thought it's got to be pretty close. We, all we had to do is park the car, get out, walk the couple hundred metres and we would have seen the guys are going off. However, we drove around that car park three mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there was no car parks. We kind of watched the guys go off next to us in the car park mm. and then we had to find other parking and we were guided to out the back of the Old Faithful Inn to another car park, which was a top secret. I didn't know it was there. Yeah. Um, so parking can be a problem. Yep. That's right, yeah. And especially in the evening, like we thought as of crowds of people who, had, who were accommodating outside of the park left that it would be quieter around the inn and generally it was like... We did get to see Old Faithful go off an hour and a half later and there was only a very small crowd of us there. But there's the restaurant in the inn and the inn itself is an, an attraction of its own. So people did mill around and the parking lot was full. Yeah, yeah the inn itself is a, is, a, it is a true experience. It is the world's biggest log cabin. So if you're into woodwork like I am, I, I was just amazed at how they've made it. The way they've done it is just absolutely astounding how they've done it. And it's still standing after I don't know how many years it's been there, but it's the world's biggest log cabin. That's an experience. Yeah. Getting to anywhere in America. Oh, hang on. Oh. I wanted to say something else about okay. Yellowstone. Oh, yeah. So for all the people out there who know Yellowstone well and maybe tearing your hair out because we didn't see everything, mm -hmm. There are two reasons for that. We are aware we didn't see everything. We knew that going into the park, we knew that planning. Even before we left Australia, we knew we wouldn't get to see everything. This whole trip for us is a bucket list trip of 
seeing as much as we can of our bucket list from the Canadian border to the Mexican border. And we work back in Australia, we have jobs, so we can only get a limited time off. So we picked the main attractions that we wanted to see that meant something to us. Yeah. And we got to see those even in the rain and the snow at times. The other reason is because there was one other thing that I wanted to see around between Tower Fall and the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone. However, Dunraven Pass was closed the entire time we were there because it was too deep with snow. And that's something that you need to be aware of. Weather conditions can change really quickly in that park. Mm. Um, and it did for us. One minute it's blue skies and the next minute it's snowing. Four seasons in one day. Yeah, Bang. so you, could, you you we had jackets going on, off, on, off all day the whole time we were there, even in the Tetons. So be prepared, have your layers ready and be ready to take them off and put them back on again. Be prepared that roads may close at short notice because of the weather and just know what you want to see. It, you know, you do your, you, do you, we do we. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and you'll find that as you watched, if you've watched some of the other videos, you'll find that at different times of one day, we've got different clothing on. We're all rugged up with beanies, big mm. jumpers, and other other times we're down just a, a T-shirt or a light shirt. So mm. it does, it changes so quickly. Especially in this spring season between winter and summer. Yeah. And it worked in our favour. We got... We got more snow, <laughs> so that's cool. Mm. Getting to Yellowstone. So look, we've found the roads across America so far. We haven't gone across the whole country, obviously, but the roads here are outstanding. When you hop on an interstate or the main highway back in Australia, you know, 110 k's an hour, they're usually really good roads. Once you start going off those, and especially where we come from, up in a small country town, you're in the back roads and a lot of those roads are really narrow pothole filled and then filled and potholed and no filled shoulders. again <laughs> no shoulders the roads over here mm. look, there's only been a couple of places where we couldn't video we tried to but it was too bumpy and that was in a town mm. Thermopolis. Thermopolis Thermopolis and we couldn't video much in that town the roads were just too bad yeah. but the other roads that we've been on the main highways absolutely outstanding so for the Australians and especially the New South Welsh people who know the Newall Highway and how nice and wide that is and, and how well travelled, that slide of back road is like in America, basically. Yeah. The two lane roads out here in between towns, even out in, in Wyoming, which is is remote in terms of American, uh, in, in terms of America, there's... It's, I think, the least densely populated state in the whole of America. So we drove for hours between towns, hours between gas stations, hours between restroom toilet stops, and that's just like Australia, right? But the roads, unlike Australia, all had shoulders, they were all smooth, only a few bumps here and there, but they were really well signed and we got plenty of warning for where there was a rough patch. So very different to Australia and much more pleasant for driving. Yep, totally agree. Which brings me to the point that we have noticed bike riders. Oh, yeah, yep, yeah. bike riders here in Wyoming. They do not need to wear helmets. So we've got guys riding around on, on Indian bikes, on the Harley Davidsons, the big road bikes, which are the most common. No helmets. And you don't need to. We looked at the law. So if you're under 18, yes, you need to wear a helmet. But apparently over 18, you don't need to. So these mm. big bikes out on the highways, yeah. most of the time, Doing 70 no miles per hour, yeah. which is like 110, 120 k's an hour. No helmet. Actually, that's the other thing too. The highway speed here, we've done up to 70 mile an hour. We, when yeah. we were thinking about doing 70 mile an hour. 80 some places. We haven't, you know, I don't think we've done an 80. Yeah, we, yeah, have. we? Yeah. On the interstate. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, yes. You think my 80 mile an hour, that is absolutely flying. That's 135 k's an hour, something like that, yeah. But the roads are so good, you just cruise. Like, mm. I was thinking, I'm not going to go over 100 k's an hour over here. No, I'm not on the wrong side of the car and the wrong side of the road. But it only takes about four or five days, and I felt really comfortable on the roads now. Mm. It's only when we get into the city place like Cheyenne that we go, remember to stay on the wrong side of the road and stuff. Mm. But but out on those open highways, that 80 mile an hour, 75, 80 mile an hour, you're just cruising. It is such a good road system and such a good road surface. Yeah, so, so far we've been in one, two, three, four, five, almost five states, and every state has had beautiful roads. So. 
road tripping in America is a dream and that's something it certainly has a one-up on Australia with. All right, last thing for me, one of the funniest things that I've found is when you look in the rear view mirror and the person behind you has their dog in the front seat. <laughs> now, my mind says, who's in the driver's seat? Well, over here, the dog sits where the driver's seat normally is in Australia. And so you look in the rear view mirror and go, my goodness, there's a dog driving that car. And then you, you have to think about it and go, no, I'm in America, let's flip it. Um, and it's funny because at home we have a, a sandy golden retriever Labrador yeah. and we did see a car with a golden retriever Labrador in the front passenger seat, <laughs> which is where in Australia the driver's seat would be. So it looked like our dog's driving a car yeah. behind us. <laughs> it gives you that double take. You look up and go, what the? Yeah. Oh, no, no, it's okay, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> food in America. There's no shortage of food and the fridge is here in the servo far out. I was trying to find iced coffee one of the days. I couldn't find oh, I did find it eventually, but, man, this fridge would have been 15 metres long and then it went around the corner. It was absolutely massive. Mm. Cheeses we've never heard of. Yep. Difficult. And such a range, yeah. huge range of cheese. But when it comes to milk or yogurt, <coughs> the range is really small compared to Australia. Like we have massive lots of milk and yogurt and different types, but that's not the case here. But they love their cheese. Cheese is on everything just about. Serving size, so things mm. are bigger over here. We often just buy one uh, meal and, and we just share it. Yeah. Lunch, we just get, what do we have the other day? Packet of chips, which comes with a lot of the meals, a packet of crisps. Mm. Um, so a hot dog, crisps and a drink, half each. That's yeah, it. We're yeah. full. And there are some times when those meals are so big that we only have, that's all we have that day. So if we know that we're going to buy something for dinner, we will just buy that thing and just have like a muesli bar for lunch or breakfast or something like that because the meal is so big, even when we halve it, for us it's massive. And going into the fast food shop like McDonald's or Wendy's or something like, Wendy's here is a burger shop, by the way, not an ice cream shop. Um, the What we call a large in Australia is what they call a medium here. So there's there's a bigger, bigger cup yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, than, than the Australian large. And over here you can just, I know this is a thing in Australia sometimes too, but you can just keep refilling and refilling mm. and refilling. Yeah, once you've drink. bought one drink, you can refill it as much as you like. A refilling. Yeah. Vegetables are hard to come by. They certainly love their broccoli. That's the main vegetable I see everywhere. Um, so we've just gone out to a grocery store and bought ourselves some fruit and veggies because we're certainly feeling the need for that after all the food we've been experiencing. <laughs> I think that's it. That's about it. So uh, um, if you have any other questions, drop them in the comments. Uh, we've still got a, a long way to go. We've got more states to go through and more things to show you. But if you have any other comments about what it's like to drive here or anything else, what it's like to be here, people are friendly. Don't worry about people. They're beautiful. We've had such a wonderful time with the people. Always happy to stop and chat and let you ask questions. And and they love to listen to us speak. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Tell them, I'm from out of town or from Australia. You've got their attention. They all mill around. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. cool. We went to talk to a family in Yellowstone for a bit and then after we left we heard them say, are they Australian? <laughs> so, yes! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so as an Australian, people, most people will love to just hear you speak, so they're happy to just let you just stand there and talk to them. Yeah, and they often ask, you know, where are you from? Mm. Where they are just, you They're interested. <laughs> they're, they're polite. Yes. Uh, yeah, yes. it's been really good, really very good experience. Polite. Yeah. And that, that is a thing. Americans in general are very, very polite. Everything's yes, ma'am, mm. no, sir. Yep. Hold the door open. Yes, wow. I will. They can queue. They, they automatically just queue. And they have this uh, inter intersection called the four-way stop sign. Mm. And it just works. People come up and it you come up with four cars and everyone's got a stop sign, right? So who goes first? Well, it's not give way to your right like in Australia. It's the car that got there first and then the next one and then the next one and the next one. And it just works. It just works. And we keep wondering, would that work in Australia? Because we're not really good with roundabouts, let alone a four-way stop sign. So, yeah. Anyhow, thanks for watching this little interlude. We'll have another episode coming up on the weekend. We'll catch you then. <laughs> See ya.